God speaks. If anything speaks, it means nothing has a voice. If anything can speak, then it means nothing has sense. And we will try to find out what has been happening in our lives. Because at times there are some voices that are speaking against us. But if we don't have the senses to feel, hear, taste and touch or sight to see, we may be thinking that they are not doing it. But today we will delve into the scriptures and see some few things that can help us. We we'll read our first scripture from the book of Leviticus, chapter number 17, verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. So without the blood, the flesh has no life. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. Remember, the atonement is not for the flesh, but it's for the soul. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Let us read First Peter chapter number one. Verse 19 through 20. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in this last time for you. So Bible is telling us something was foreordained even before the foundations of the world was put in place. And let us figure out what was it that was for God day before the foundation of the world. Let's go to Revelation chapter number 13, verse number 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So whatever was foreordained was the slain of the Lamb. And any time you slain a Lamb, blood comes out. Hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 4 as we continue to lay our foundation. Verse number 10 through 11. And he said, what hast thou done? This is God speaking here. The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Meaning when blood comes out, it has voice to speak. Is somebody with me? So that is why we learn from Levitical 17, uh, the verse of 11, that do not try to eat anything when you read the verse number 14. If you eat of any blood, it means you are eating of life. Hallelujah. And if life is blood, then you ought to have blood to be alive. We have also studied and we have understood that when God molded man, he had to breathe into man so that man would become a living soul. So the breath of God made man alive. And now let us try to touch this. We know the created man was in existence before the world of man. But we never heard from the scripture anywhere that when God breathed into the, the molded man, God had to bring the created man again. 
into the world and man. That is the created man was embedded in the breath that God breathed into the flesh. So children of God, if the modern man was actually a dead man, and breath came so that he became a living soul, then it means the created man and the soul was infused into the molded man so that he can also have a soul. And now we have understood that the senses also reside in the soul. So if the senses reside in the soul and the senses is also in the blood, then we can conclude the blood is the soul. Is someone with me? We're going somewhere. Let us go to Genesis 35, verse number 18. And it came to pass as her soul, meaning Rachel's soul, was in departing, for she died. And uh, that is a test that confused uh, many of us for a very long time. It is saying, Rachel soul is departing. Why? Because she died. So it means when you die, your soul doesn't remain in the flesh. Your soul departs. But then there are people who will also argue that a preacher asks yourself the blood was still in the flesh that died. And this is where we are. Because anytime the soul leaves, the life in the body is gone. Uh, we, we're going somewhere. So he says, Rachel did something. Rachel cried out. But she did not cry out with her flesh. Because listen, she died. And as the soul was departing, a voice came out. So is it possible you can die in the flesh and yet your soul is still speaking? We'll find out. We'll find out. Let us go to the book of Revelation chapter number 6. Verse 9 through 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they did what? And they cried. That means souls have voice. Uh, are you with me? Yeah. If souls have voice, God is also telling us in Genesis 4 10 that blood also has voice. So if blood leaves with the soul, then when soul goes out, blood goes out. Then when soul is speaking forth, it means the blood is also speaking. God help us. Hallelujah. So he says, uh, they cry and they are crying for God to avenge. That means souls can petition. And there are some people who do not think that any soul can petition because when they die, they have already, they are already dead and they are gone. But I'm here to announce to you their souls can still speak. Hallelujah. But if the souls are speaking, do you have the ears to hear? If the souls are, are speaking, do you have the senses so that you can touch? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's do Hebrews 9, 11 through 15. But Christ, 
become a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. It is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and cows, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of Anhypha sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself with our spouse to God? Guide your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And the 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the new testament or the new covenant. That means of death. For the redemption of the transgression, that way the first testament did. Which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So, Bible is telling us he shared his blood, and the blood was not shared in a tabernacle that were made with human hands. So, it means that wherever the blood was shared, there was a tabernacle, and that tabernacle. Is not on earth. Uh, is somebody with me? We heard in the tabernacle under the altar souls are speaking. We are not talking about an earthly altar, the heavenly altar, because for even Moses to build a tabernacle here, God ought to leave the template. He says, Whatever you are supposed to do on earth actually exist in heaven. So the question here is where is this heaven? And there are people who speculate that heaven, oh, it, it, it's a spiritual thing in the air somewhere. But I'm here to tell you, heaven is a place. Heaven is a planet. Hallelujah. So now listen to this. Lucifer will even confirm that when I went to that planet, there was still a sky above that planet. And I wanted to go higher again. So it's a place that you can see and walk on gold. It's not something in thin air. So that people confuse you. This heaven we are talking about doesn't even exist. And I'm here to tell you, it exists. But you can go there with this physical body. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen people going to the moon? Why is it that they, they need to put on a particular clothing to get to the moon? Because their body cannot be sustained over there. So they have to cover themselves. And in heaven, you don't go there with this flesh. You need to be translated so that you can still be there. So if the souls of these people who died are speaking for for vengeance and God avenged, it means their blood is still speaking. Is somebody with me? Now let us look at something. Colossians 1 verse 19 through 20. He says that for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. How is this peace negotiated? If the blood 
has no voice. Because anytime there are bone of contentions, we need a mediator who can speak and a mediator who can understand all languages. Because if I speak Spanish and somebody is speaking Swahili, we need an interpreter, a mediator who can understand both languages. And the Bible says, peace came to us because the blood of the Lamb is able to understand and defend whatever we have done. So he says, God wants to reconcile us unto himself, but he needed a mediator. And the blood of Jesus stood up and had a voice and says, I will do this. Hallelujah. Remember, he says the blood was shed from the foundation of the world. So where is the blood now? The blood is in the foundation. So the blood can direct how things should go. Have you ever asked yourself, what is it that there is a boundary between the sea and the earth? The soil. And God commanded that this is your boundary. Never cross and come to the end. When you come, you are destroying things. So immediately you see things are being destroyed. Go back to where I placed you. So the blood of the lamb is still speaking, though you don't have eyes to see. The blood is still speaking for you. The blood is in the transaction between you and your creator. The blood is still here. The blood is at your home. The blood is at your workplace. So wherever you go, there is a voice that is speaking for you. You may not have eyes to see, but I'm here to tell you the blood is alive. That is why you can tell demons, get out of this place. I decree with the blood of the Lamb, go be consumed. And all of a sudden, demons are running away. If there is no life in the blood, why do you continue to apply the blood today? Because it's been over 2,000 years, but you have faith and confidence that the blood is still alive. Hallelujah. Let us do 1 John 5 8. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Today, our concentration is on the blood. Now, when God permits, we'll come back to the spirit and the water. So now, if the blood is a witness, then it means there is a jurisdiction that has a court room. And in that courtroom, the prosecutor is there, the defender is there, and whoever has come to pronounce judgment is also sitting on his seat. Please listen to me. If you have been accused of anything, you need somebody to defend you. And Bible is telling us, one of the witnesses is called the blood. So now, if somebody takes your picture, anything from your body, and they present it on a shrine, they will slaughter any animals, and their confidence is that the blood in the animal can come and fight you. But here is the situation. We have also understood that the blood of gold and sheep could not convince God. He needed a precious blood. So that all the killing of animals will stop. So if somebody is killing an animal to destroy you, I'm here to tell you, whatever country they take you, oh, the presence of Jesus' blood will show up. Because he is your witness. And who is a witness? A witness is somebody who partook in whatever case they were bringing, has information and knowledge concerning what they are saying. So if your enemies are saying that you saw something from them, 
So the place a curse upon your family, I decree, I don't care the animals they kill, be it bull, be it goat or sheep. There is one thing that I know. When the blood of Jesus shows up in the courtroom, it nullifies any power in any other blood. I decree this after you that God is about to speak on your behalf. The blood of Jesus is about to speak on your behalf. I came to tell somebody today the blood still speaks and it speaks better things than the blood of his blood. I came to tell somebody. I don't care how far they will take you. I don't care how deep they will say you have fallen. If your witness is the blood, the blood will show up. The blood will lift you up. And the blood will say, son or daughter, I brought you back. Reconcile you to your creator. I came to tell somebody today, my witness is here. The blood is here. The blood is doing something secretly that maybe your eyes cannot see. But I'm here to tell you, he has senses that when you go through pain, the blood also goes through pain. When your sight has been tuned, oh, the blood feels the same. I came to tell somebody today, make the blood of Yeshua Hamashiach, make the blood who is your witness go to any extent that they want to take you. If they want to destroy you, may the blood be your shield. If they want to kill you, may the blood give you life. Oh, whatever they say, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. As long as I have my witness, he knows my name. And my name has been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. So I came today telling some people that the blood speaks. What is the blessing concerning your life? Uh, did anybody tell you uh, that you will never prosper? Uh, I came to tell somebody, uh, prosperity is in the blood. Uh, and the blood is saying, uh, today I lift you up. Uh, the blood is saying, uh, you have been down for so long. Uh, today is the day I give you a new beginning. Uh, I came to tell somebody, uh, life is being released. Uh, and is there anything dead in your life? Uh, did anybody uh, put any sicknesses in your body, uh, I come to tell you, uh, your witness, uh, who is the blood, uh, says I have healing for you. Uh, I come to tell someone uh, that if a loved one uh, has left you, uh, if you have been separated uh, from your loved ones, uh, the blood is saying, uh, I produce life, uh, I produce love, uh, receive your love today. Uh, oh, if anybody uh, doesn't care about you, uh, I come to tell you, uh, the blood cares. Because the blood is your witness. Shut up and see it. I said the blood can see. But there is something about this blood. It says that when your witness comes, Proverbs 12 17, that witness ought to speak honestly. So if somebody is bringing a witness against you, and the person is your enemy. I have news for them. A false witness will never go unpunished. Uh, that is Proverbs 99. So when you hear that people have died and they are conspiring against you, bring in false accusation. Do not be afraid. Don't worry. Because there is a punishment put in place for those people. But this witness I'm talking about is a truthful witness. Uh, you, are, you are not with me. He will always say the truth though some truths can actually hurt. But if the blood is your witness, he will speak of the truth. Amen. And the Bible also tells us that is the truth that can only set you free. So if he doesn't say he's the truth, how can you come out of the shackles? If he doesn't say the truth, how can you be delivered from the hands of your enemies? Hallelujah. Then let's go to the book of Matthew 18, verse 16. It says by the testimony of two or three witnesses, a case is settled. 
Uh, is somebody with me? And Bible is telling us blood, water, and spirit are witnesses. If two or three witnesses they join their heads together, it is confirmed. And I can tell you the Holy Spirit is one of the witnesses. Oh, you are not with me. You are not with me. So if the blood is a witness and the Holy Spirit is a witness, your case is settled. Uh, did anybody go to a place and they said, may all the children of this family suffer? Today I have news to you. The Spirit knows everything. And the blood is your witness. Yeah. Uh, you are not with me. Uh, uh, the other time, uh, I met a woman, and this woman is saying, in our family, that we are so beautiful. And yes, I can confirm she's so beautiful. Since we are four, none of us is married. The reason is that, not knowing the great grandparents, some years back, financially, they were not skilled. So they said to themselves, we better go to this shrine. Then we can take finances. We have children though. But to have finance to take care of them. And the God says, okay, go when we give you this money. None of your descendants will be able to get money. They say, all we need is money. Just give us money, we can produce. And now the grandchildren are suffering. Beautiful ladies look into the mirror and they say, yeah, we have arrived. But no man is calling them. But today, I have a witness. And the witness was present. Whatever they did against you, he says you are not guilty. Because it isn't you who did it. Whoever did it is dead and gone. So the witness says, uh, I am bringing you out of this shackles. Uh, I'm bringing you out of this cancer. Uh, I'm bringing you out from them. Hallelujah. Amen. And now let's listen to what my brother Paul says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 33 through 39. And he says, Nobody, I'm summarizing, nobody can bring charge against you. Oh, uh, is it a, a principality? Is it powers? Is it any angel? Uh, just name them. If only they have a name, somebody created them. So the creator who created all of them says uh, they cannot bring charge against you. Yes. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. Why is he saying it? Because his blood is so sweet. And we understood that when the blood of Jesus comes, it nullifies any other powers. Amen. So now, if you your family, there is a giant who is saying that uh, I will not allow anybody to have white wedding. I have news for the giant. Just one stone can bring that giant down. If David could do that, what about Jesus who created David? And Jesus says that uh, I am presenting myself before you. Whoever brings anything against you is bringing it against me. Because if I have purchased you with my blood, you don't belong to them anymore. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. Oh, you didn't know when you were in school that you saw some things and some men and you followed them but now, you are the precious child of God, bought with his blood. So whatever they say against you, the blood will answer them. May the blood speak for you. May the blood protect you. May the blood lift you up. May the blood set for the heads of fire around you. It's all about the blood. Because the life you need is in the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let us do this and we'll write it up really quick. This witness we are talking about ought to have a case before he becomes a witness. So if there's no case against you, 
Why do you need a witness? Is somebody with me? And there are many of us. We don't want case. Uh, we don't want any problem. No cases. Let me live my life without a case. So as you are living your life, the witness is also allowing you to live your life. But immediately, you see your enemies coming like a flower. Ah, the witness is, guess what? I know how to build standards. Are you not touch that one? Because at any time you fall, there is a proof that the witness can lift you up. But here you are. You don't want any problem. Yes, you say you are a child of God. But your own Bible also told you that God says, I will put enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. If you are a seed of the woman, the enemy will come after you. But fear not. Because if he comes, you have an advocate who knows how to speak. I don't care how far you have fallen. Please come to him. When you come, he has voice. And he will speak concerning your life. Because there are many of us, we want to do it in our own way. If I can stop this, if I can stop that, if I can do this within a year, then I'll present myself to him. If you have the strength to do it, you might have done it a long time ago. Just as you are, come to him. When you come, his blood will give you life. When you come, his blood will protect you. When you come, his blood can lift you up. Now listen to this carefully. And as I was looking at the Genesis 4, 10 through 11, now Cain thought he was killing his brother without anybody seeing him. Not knowing the creator of the heavens and the earth is everywhere. Uh, maybe you are going through some things and in your mind, God is not seeing you. But I'm here to tell you, he knows what you are going through. He sees everything. But in his own time, he makes things perfect. Child of God, King was sitting telling God, am I my brother's king? What an insult. And then God is telling you, if you did well. So there are some of us, we don't have the strength to do well. And we are saying, Oh, 2020 passed by. 2021 passed by. And in 2022, uh, I will do well. It's not by your strength. It's not by your power. Just come to Christ. When you come to him, make sure you present everything. Bring every burden unto him. And he says, Though I know you are heavy laden, but I am the one who gives you rest. I am here today to tell somebody the blood still speaks. The blood can speak in your valley time. The blood can speak when you are on a mountain. The blood can still speak when you are on a hospital bed. The blood can still speak when relationships are not going well. The blood is still speaking today. But can you hear me? Can you hear his voice? Because there are many of us when we pray, we don't even have time to hear our answers. We are ready to go. And many of us, immediately we want to go to work, we program ourselves the minutes when we use still prayers. So after prayers, we get into our car and we're going. But my question to you is when you pray, what answer? Did you hear the blood that was saved from the foundation of the world? Is still here. Is still sick. May the blood be your witness in anything that you do. People may accuse you. People may say a lot of things against you. But who is your witness? Because you look around. Whatever they are saying is not true. 
praying for them they can come out as a witness to support whatever they are seeing and doing. But what about you? You don't have any witness. But I introduce to you that the witness of the blood is here. Do they thought you might have once bowed? Bow with you. But I'm here to tell you. When your witness shows up, he can still dig you out of your grave. He can still give you life. And he will tell you, go and live your life. I came to tell somebody today, the blood of Jesus is life. May you receive life. In Jesus' mighty name. If somebody put your hands together, I want to give you this. Oh, is somebody blessed today? Is somebody blessed today? Within the next two, three minutes, can we please be on our feet? We are going to present our petition unto our witness. We are going to tell him, look at what has been happening around. Wherever we go, we are wearing masks. Wherever we go, they say, if you don't have masks, you can pay three years. Whatever we do, they say, if you don't have masks, you can do this. We began with me. But some aren't around. That doesn't mean life is over. Life continues. But today, I present to you your witness that from this hour onwards, Though some will fall on the left, some will fall on the right, some will fall before you, some will fall behind you. But your witness is the one who will speak of your life. Lift up your voice and present your petition to him. Come on, lift up your voice. In the next minute or two, tell your witness, tell the blood what you want he to do for you. Lift up your voice. Father, we have come before the throne of grace. Oh Lord, my God, the blood of Yeshua Hamashiach is still speaking. It's still speaking. It's still speaking. Oh Lord, whatever the enemies have taken from our hands, the witness is here and we present our petition. If joy has been taken away, your witness is bringing joy back. Whatever they have taken, recover all because the blood can do it. Because the blood can do it. There's life in the blood. The souls of those who were killed, oh, they are still speaking. What about you who is still in your flesh? You can also present your petition before the throne of grace. Lift up your voice. You have about 30 minutes to do this and say to yourself, I am not going back the same. Make a witness I heard about today. Go with me so that if any accuser rises up, my witness will show up. Remember Zechariah chapter number 3. To the high priest who is in spirit, who has been empowered by God, was still wearing a filthy garment. Filthy robe and Satan is standing beside him, accusing him. But I'm here to tell you, the Lord is also here. His blood is here. His life is here. And the Lord can change your situation. May the witness change.